Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. I wanted to show how to sew a pillow. A pillow, it doesn't have pokey corners, it doesn't require a zipper, so it's easy to sew, and yet it is a slip cover, cover that can be easily removed for laundering. I'm also gonna show how to sew the pillow form, in case you don't have one, or if you cannot find one in the size you would like, because not everything comes in standard size. For instance, this pillow was a towel. I really liked the design and didn't want to dry my hands on it, so I've turned it into a pillow. I bet you have some interesting fabric as well. It would make a great pillow for your couch or your bed or your favorite comfy chair. So get it out and let's go. Let me show you close up this pillow so that you can see how the back does the overlap there and there's the pillow form right inside. This is a great project for any interesting print you don't have a lot uh, have a lot of because your front and back don't have to match. So get your front fabric, mine's a towel, get some backing fabric, and it could be the same fabric if you have enough. And then you'll need a pillow form, which you can buy in standard sizes, or if you need to make your own pillow form, you'll need some plain weave fabric and some fiber fill. I'm using a muslin, a cheap, muslin and the fiber fill looks like this it's fluffy it's not little pellets and shapes and it's not flat like the quilt batting white paper will help you find the design on your fabric you'll need scissors a fabric marker that's not permanent and a ruler now we're going to use the white paper to find our design and I find I have these strips mine are cut from tag board because I use them all the time but about two inch wide strips and you could have four individual strips here you just lay them out and move them around to find a design that you like. And this works great on printed fabric. I know this is printed, but like a big print, because then if there's a design element in there that you want to feature, you can move these around and see how you want to cut out your fabric. So play with it and get a good look of the measurement. See where you like it. When you get it where you want, take a note of how wide and how tall you want it. And then go ahead and mark it. If you can't see your marker, if your fabric's dark and you can't see your marker, you can also use pins to mark your fabric. So we're going to need to cut out a pillow front and a pillow back. And if you're like me, you're gonna to have to make a pillow form. So I'm gonna to have to cut out a pillow form. And of course that's actually two pieces I have to cut out that it would be a back and a front because it takes two pieces to make the form. So I want my finished pillow to be uh, nine and a quarter inches tall by 16 inches wide. When I go to cut it out, I'm gonna need to add some seam allowance, of course, which is going to be a half inch all the way around. Half inch all the way around means to add an inch to both dimensions, so 10 and a quarter inches high by 16, I mean 17 inches wide. Now the back, which is two pieces that overlap, is actually going to be cut as one rectangle at the beginning. So it's the height by the width plus five and a half inches. And for us, that means, or for me, that means 10 and a quarter inches high by 17 wide plus five and a half inches, and that's gonna give me 22 and a half inches for my width. So my front is 10 and a quarter by 17, but my back is 10 and a quarter by 22 and a half. Now my pillow form pieces are gonna be the same as my front, because they'll be the right finished size pillow, which is 10 and a quarter by 17. So I just wanna be clear about the back it will be two pieces eventually, but right now you're just going to cut one piece a little bit wider than the finished piece. So we're going to cut the front, one front, and we're going to cut one back piece, and it is five and a half inches wider than the front. And then if you need to make a pillow form, you're going to cut two of them, and they're going to be the same size as the front, and it's going to be in cheaper fabric, and it's going to be in solid fabric. All right, so I've cut out my pillow form pieces out of a plain weave muslin fabric. 
And there I have two pieces there. And the reason that you want a solid fabric is because if it's a print, it might bleed through your slip cover. The print on the form might show through, so you don't want that. You go ahead and get this um, cut out and sewn all the way around the four edges, but you want to leave an opening of about four inches on one of the sides. Then turn it right side out. And on a fabric like this, there is no wrong side. But just turn it so the stitches, the seams are in the inside. And you might need a wooden spoon or another tool to help you poke out the corners. Now I didn't clip the corners because this is a pillow form. It's not going to be shown. My pillows, my um, corners don't have to be crisp right now. And then go ahead and start stuffing it with your fiber fill. I wouldn't use any pieces of fiber fill larger than those that you just saw. You want to use small pieces and that's so that your pillow won't become uh, lumpy. So use smaller pieces, use a tool to get it where you need it. And it's going to take a lot of stuffing because there's nothing sadder than a flat pillow. Well, there are some things sadder than a flat pillow, but a flat pillow looks sad. So go ahead and you're going to have to massage it so it's not so lumpy. You're going to fill it and keep filling it and filling it. Finally, you're going to get it to a point where you like it. Get it back into those corners. You're going to have to massage it a lot to get it not so lumpy. And then when you're done, when you get to where you like, you'll fold the seam allowances in at the opening. And a lot of times they'll just automatically fold in. And you don't have to measure them. As long as they're folded in, it doesn't have to be exactly a half inch. But get it in and pin them shut. Line them up, line up the folded edges there and pin it shut. You have to move the stuffing out of the way a little bit. Then you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew as close, close to the edge there and you wanna capture the entire opening from end to end, don't leave an opening. And you have to push the stuffing out of the way to sew it. So here it is, all sewn up, closed up, it's just a little line of stitches there. Doesn't have to look pretty, it's going inside the slip cover. So I wanna show you these corners. You see how my sides look kinda of curved? And that's something we're going to avoid on our slip cover. I'm going to show you how to do that because you don't want these. They're called dog-eared corners and you don't want those. So on our back and front, we're going to just round off the corners. I'm going to show you how so you can avoid those. So I have my front cut out and you can see I have a half inch seam allowance all the way around. And if you've also used uh, any kind of mark on your fabric, you want to remove them at this time because once the iron, the steam from the iron touches it, they usually become permanent. So go ahead, before you do anything else to the front, remove the any marks that you might have. And I've cut out my back and my back is was shifting a lot. And so later I've used some spray starch. So that's a little tip if your back is also loose fabric. You can see my back is about five and a half inches wider, longer than the front piece, which it needs to be. Okay, so now we're gonna take care of the corners by rounding them off. And the reason we round off the corners before we sew it is so that we don't end up with these doggy corners that stick out. Now we're gonna round them off, but our pillow, our finished pillow is still gonna look square or rectangle. So fold your front piece in half lining up the corners and then fold it in half again lining up the corners so now we're going to have it folded in quarters so i've got all four corners lined up there and i'm going to take a ruler and measure doesn't matter what side you start with what is halfway between the fold and the corner so i have eight and a half inches i'm going to mark at four and a quarter. I'm gonna mark the halfway mark bet between the corners, the four corners and the folded edge. So on that side it's two and a half. And then I need to mark in my seam allowance on the corner side. 
My seam allowance is a half inch, so I'm going to mark down and I'm going to mark over a half inch. Now, basically, we're going to take, we're going to draw a line from the halfway mark to the seam allowance mark, the one in the corner, but we want it to be a tapered, smooth line. So if you have something curved, like a curved ruler, or even an object that has a nice curve, go ahead and use it as a guide. Go from the halfway point to your corner mark, which is your seam allowance in on both sides. Again, I'm going from the halfway mark to the seam allowance mark in on the corners. And then when you get it all marked, cut it. Cut off those corners. I'm cutting off through all four layers at this point. And now I'm going to do the same to the back, but you're going to do it differently because remember the back isn't the same size rectangle. So the halfway mark would be completely off. So fold it in half widthwise because that's the way it overlaps. Line up your corners. You're just going to fold it in half, not in quarters. Line up your corners and then we're going to use the front piece as a pattern or guide or template. Just line up the straight edges, edges that have not been tampered with, those edges and that edge. And then using it as a guide, trim the corners of the backing fabric. And now I'm cutting through two layers, the back. So I have four rounded corners on my front piece. They're not exactly rounded, but they're tapered. And then I have the four rounded corners on my back piece. Now remember, we've cut one back piece, but it needs to be two. So now is when we go ahead and we cut it in half. Now that we have our corners done. We're gonna cut it in half so it overlaps. And I did, I folded it, went ahead and creased it as a guide for cutting. Now I have two pieces and we're gonna take care of the back. So this straight edge is the edge we're gonna finish off. I'm not gonna finish off the rounded edge because that gets you know, sewn into the seam. It's this open straight edge we're gonna finish off. And we're gonna do that simply by folding it and then stitching it down. So I use my sewing machine to measure. I use a basting stitch and my sewing machine and I sew a fold line. I'm using a contrasting thread here so you can see it on camera, but you want to use a matching thread so you don't have to pick it out should it show. The first fold line is a quarter inch from the raw straight edge. You're just going to fold over a quarter inch. And if you use a basting stitch on your sewing machine to measure, it's really quick. So a quarter inch and then I'm folding in three quarters of an inch. So all together, the second fold line that I stitched, guideline for folding, was an inch from the raw edge. I folded in a quarter inch and then three quarter inch, an inch all together. Fold it and press it. Then you're gonna take it to your machine and you're gonna stitch down, not quite three quarter inches away from the folded edge. You don't want to sew right on that folded edge because then you wouldn't capture the raw edge. So you want to fold close to the raw edge without falling off of it. But of course you want to fold, you want to sew on the good side of your fabric. We folded everything to the wrong side and you want to sew on the top side because your stitches always look better coming from the needle than the bobbin. After you sew, go ahead and give it a good, your stitches a good pressing and then go ahead and press the front as well. Now let's put it together. We're gonna to put our front side of the pillow with the design facing up toward you. The right, that's called the right side. And then the backs will go right side down. So the wrong side, the back side of the backs are facing you. Then go ahead and overlap them and line up all your edges. See their overlap there and then pin, pin it all together.
and you're gonna sew it all the way around. You don't have to leave an opening because there's your opening right there. Now remember we trimmed off the edges, we trimmed the seam allowance off the corners, I mean. But when you go ahead and sew, now you're still gonna use a half inch seam allowance. You're gonna act like you never even touched those corners, like this is the original shape. Just sew a half inch seam allowance all the way around. And when you sew, you're gonna sew do -do 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 to the edge a half inch in, and you're gonna stop a half inch before you get to the next edge. And you could go ahead and mark it right now when you're at your work surface. Put a little dot there, or you can just do eyeball it. But when you get to the edge, you're gonna put your needle down and use a hand wheel if you have to on your machine, or you're gonna leave your needle down in the fabric, then you're gonna lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric. And you're gonna pivot it until the new edge lines up with the seam guide on your machine. So when that's lined up, you put your presser foot back down and you sew down to the next edge. Do, 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 do. Next corner, do. get half inch away, cause that's your seam allowance. You leave the needle down in the fabric, you lift the presser foot up and you pivot the fabric with the needle still down in the fabric. And then you line that up to the seam guide, your new edge to the seam guide, and you continue to sew. And that's how you're gonna get nice corners on this pillow and on every project you ever have to turn a corner. Once you finish sewing, go ahead and give it a good pressing. Because pressing makes your sewing look better. So now we're gonna take care of the corners. And I don't mean rounding them off this time, I mean clipping the corners. You clip the corners to reduce the bulk, and that way when you turn it, your corners look good. They look like a corner. So go ahead and clip at a 45 degree angle to the corner. And then go back and clip a little bit more off of those corners. Especially if your fabric is thick, like corduroy or velvet or denim, you really make really makes a difference, you really wanna do it. Should you nick your stitches, you can use a drop of fray check, you can use a drop of clear drying fabric glue, or you could go in and stitch again that corner. Go ahead and do this to all three corners, clipping the corners. You wanna get close to those stitches, but not so close that your fabric unravels and eventually the stitches will come out. So keep that in mind. And when you're done, flip it out. Go ahead and poke those corners with your fingers, never with scissors, because scissors can bust through the stitches and then you have to redo it. So don't use anything sharp to ever poke out a corner. Like, you know, like you can use a point turner, which are sharp but dull, but you don't want to use a seam ripper or scissors to poke a corner. So I'm lining up my edges here and pressing them. I'm pulling them out and just giving it a nice press so that the seam edge is right on the edge, it's in the center. When you get that done, go ahead and stuff your pillowcase. It took a little bit of effort. At first I thought my pillow was, my pillow form was too big, but it, it wasn't at all. So once you get it all in there, massage it a little and don't get too discouraged if you have like a floppy corner or a little loose outside there. Massaging it and moving it, manipulating the foam will make it fill out. One thing I did learn is I didn't quite leave enough uh, room between his head and the edge because of the curvature of the stuffing. Once you put the stuffing in, it curves the pillow, curves the image. So that's something to keep in mind for next time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed making a pillow. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>